Welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. Today we're going to the circus and you will get to see my many missteps along the way. So let's jump right in. To prep the doll, I cut away the hair until it's relatively short, then I buzz it down. This is unnecessary, but I feel like it keeps me from ripping the part line. I then heat the head with my hair dryer and I pop it off. Next, I take a flathead screwdriver and scrape the inside of the head and pull out all of the nasty glue coated hair with some needle nose pliers. I really hate when it's super sticky like this. Now if you notice, this doll has some pretty big holes in her part line in other places. If you take and boil the head for 3 minutes, they shrink up a good bit. Now take 100% acetone and remove all of the original paint. You can use regular nail polish with acetone, but it's going to take a lot more elbow grease. I mix up a couple of colors to closely match the hair I have planned for her and I apply several coats to the head. To create the hair, I take some acrylic yarn and I cut lots of 10 inch strands. I then take each strand and separate its threads and loop them onto a metal barbecue skewer. I like to use metal skewers instead of wooden ones because the fibers get caught on the wooden ones. Do this about a million times. After I have quite a few filled skewers, I gently brush it down with a pet hairbrush. Don't brush too hard though or you will shred the fibers down to nothing. Then I take a flat iron and I straighten them. To make them into wefts, I cut the top away from the skewer and lay them down onto some plastic. I like to have something handy to use as a straight edge to help keep my line even, and this piece of glass serves double duty as a glue palette. I then apply a light layer of Mod Podge to the cut top. Make sure to keep your line relatively straight for cleaner looking wefts. Now for the satisfying part, pulling the glue off. After you separate the wefts from the plastic, trim down the glued tops to about an eighth of an inch. Let's give this girl some hair. I prefer to both reroute and apply wefts to my dolls. I feel like totally rerouting with yarn leaves mine too poofy, or I have big holes when I try not to fill the whole head. Instead, I reroute just the part and the hairline. For rerouting, I take a piece of the yarn and I loop it over my finger. Then I take my rerouting tool and slide it under the hair. If some of the yarn doesn't go into the needle eye, I gently rub my fingernail down the needle tip and push it in. Then I stab it into the head, making sure the tool is perpendicular to the hairline to avoid ripping holes. If I am rerouting with yarn, I do every other hole since it's so fluffy. When I get to the part line, I continue to reroute as I have been, but once the hair is in, I separate it to the left and to the right to create the part. Now to start filling in the middle. I pull aside the part line, making sure it's out of the way and still separated. I apply a thin bead of liquid fusion glue. I like using this because it dries clear and relatively quickly as well. Then lay your weft onto the glue. You will notice that the weft has a more matte side and a shiny side. I make sure to lay my weft shiny side down. When I get close to the top, I prefer to put my glue directly on the weft to avoid accidentally getting glue onto the existing hair. I start making patterns for the various pieces by wrapping my mannequin in plastic wrap and masking tape. 
After that, I sketch out the overall shape and seams for the piece. I make sure to mark where I would want the chest art as well. I then cut this off and trace my pieces onto the paper and add a seam allowance. I tend to like to start with the clothing on a doll before the face up because I find that things don't always go according to plan. On this particular doll, I made her tail coat three times. The first fabric I tried wanted to fray and tear at the seams. The second was too thick and just didn't lay flat, but the third one worked perfectly. After my patterns are ready, I mark them on the back side of the fabric with heat activated pins. I find these just make my life easier since I hate pinning fabric. After I cut it out, I fray check the edges. To start the bodice, I sewed the chest darts, then attached the sides. After that, I hem the top and the bottom, adding a decorative trim at the same time. Once I'm happy with the fit, I add the Velcro. Now onto my favorite part, embellishments. I feel like it's these extra details that really take dog clothes to the next level. For the bodice, I clipped the back off a cameo button and I glue it on with E6000 Fabric Fusion. This stuff is the best for gluing things to fabric. I get really excited when I start seeing things finally taking shape. Now on to my least favorite part, making shoes. I loathe making shoes, but here it is. I wrap the leg up into some plastic wrap and I cut a rectangle of warbler that is as tall as I want the boots and wide enough to fit around the leg. I trace the outline of the bottom of her foot and I cut two of those out. I heat up one of the soles and press it into the bottom of her foot. Then I heat the rectangle and wrap it around her leg. If I was making something more complex, I would make a masking tape pattern, but these shoes are going to be pretty basic. Once I have the leg completely covered, I reheat the warbler and cut off the extra. Warming the warbler first just makes cutting easier. Now I warm the warbler again and I roll out any imperfections. I mark the top of the boot and cut it off carefully so I don't scratch the doll. For the heel, I measured the desired length and I cut it from a toothpick. I covered the toothpick in a thin layer of warbler. Remember never to throw out your warbler cutoff. It's a thermal plastic and can be reheated and rolled out flat. If your first attempts turn out to be epic failures, just heat them back up and roll them back out. Now heat the remaining sole and heel, then attach to the bottom of the foot. For the flat part of the boot, I take a pattern I made and cut it from 1mm craft foam, and I super glue it to the top edge. To remove the boot, I carefully heat it with a heat gun and cut it with an X-Acto knife. I like my shoes to have real laces so I need actual holes. To get them, I heat a needle and I push it through where I've marked the holes. Actually lacing them is a tricky matter. I take a floss threader and pop it through the hole and add my thread through the loop then pull through. It's a bit harder bringing them from the inside out but doable with some practice. I 
make tassels out of more thread and I add other fun nail art embellishments to finish them off. Now no ringmaster is complete without a top hat. To make the hat, I trace circles for the brim and the top of the hat. For the sides, I measure the circumference of the top and divide that measurement by the number of sides I want, in this case four. I cut this piece to the height I want and slim the middle to create a more whimsical looking hat. I cut all of these pieces from 2mm craft foam. I glue them together with super glue and the help of some glue accelerant. Once all the pieces are together, I clean up the seams with a Dremel and attach it to a piece of wire to help it stay on the doll. I make loops to later add pins to hold it in place. I finish it off with some decorative ribbon and a paper flower. It's almost face up time, so let's grab some materials. I use pan pastels, gouache, and various brands of watercolor pencils. I have Caran d'Ache, Arteza, Derwent, Faber Castell, and Generals. Some other things I like to have on hand is a silicone brush cleaner, various types of erasers, a blending pencil, nail dotting tool. This cut down brush is one of my go to supplies. Some liner brushes, and some fluffy makeup brushes. I even like to have toothpicks and q tips on hand. First, we need to protect that hair, so I pin some cotton fabric to her head and make sure it's covered. Keep in mind that if your fabric covers part of the doll's skin, there will be a blank space when she's finished. Remember when I said there were many missteps along the way? Well, here they are. This face up was difficult for some unknown reason. What was supposed to be a quick project between some of my bigger dolls took three attempts before I got it right. Here is my first attempt. Fail. Now for face up attempt number two. The entire time I worked on this, it kept looking worse and worse. It was looking really muddy and the colors were just not what I wanted. I was spending time just staring at this thing, trying to see where things were going wrong and hoping I could course correct. I kept thinking, it's gonna hit a point and look better since that happens sometimes. Well, it never did. Fail. I erased the whole thing. So this time around I had a much better start. I evaluated the colors I was using and in the end the pastels I was shading with were my biggest culprit in the muddy mess so I changed them. Before I can start the face up I apply a thin layer of Mr. Super Clear off camera wearing a mask. Then I start blocking in the eye shape with a white pencil. I then outline the top lid in black using a Faber-Castell Art Grip Aquarelle pencil. I find these have a harder core so they are great for fine lines and lashes. I like to work on both eyes at the same time and use short light strokes. This helps me to keep things symmetrical. Using a pink watercolor pencil, I sketch in the waterline and the tear duct. I make them darker in the corners and lighter in the middle. Then I darken the outer edge of the waterline and add eyelid creases. Anytime you want to save your work or your pencil stop drawing on the surface of the face, apply another layer of Mr. Super Clear. This seals in your work and allows the pencils to build up color again.
Now let's do some contouring. For this, I use a stubby little brush that I have cut down. The bristles are on the stiffer side, so even after cutting it down, I'm not rubbing the metal tip onto the plastic. I apply pastels to shade the eye socket, under the eyes, the side of the nose and lips, and under the mouth. I use Q-tips to help blend it out. I make several passes during the face-up to get greater contrast. I make sure to darken the ears, keeping the high points brighter to give them definition. I use a big brush to dust away excess pastel. This keeps me from pushing it into the surface. I use a larger brush to contour under the cheekbones and under the chin and around the temple and forehead. I highlight the high points of her face, like her forehead, bridge of the nose, and the top of the cheeks with white pastel. I apply light pink blush to her cheeks, temples, forehead, nose, and chin. I repeat these same steps with nearly every application of Mr. Super Clear. I carefully dab red pastel onto her lips, keeping it darker on the top lip and in the corners. I like to use a wet toothpick to help pick up any stray watercolor. Now I'm going to sketch out her eyebrows. With a bit of pastel, I sketch out a general shape and I use my eraser to refine them. Then the difficult task of trying to match them. My dolls typically have eyebrows like my own, as in not quite even. To give the lips some detail, I draw lines making sure to curve them to the contour of the lip and I gently blend. Now let's sketch out these eyes. I draw an iris shape on both eyes making sure they are symmetrical. If they are not and you move on, you will have a harder time trying to correct them later. I find that using a slightly wet liner brush picks up pencil marks and helps shape the iris. Once the irises are symmetrical, I apply a solid color by lifting it directly off the pencil with a wet brush. I want her eyes to have a soft purple to blue shift, so I apply blue to the bottom and a darker purple to the top. This purple is very intense, so I blend it out with a damp brush.
To define the eyebrows, I use a super sharp pencil and make tiny flicks in the direction the hair grows. Using a white pencil, I highlight her cupid's bow and eyelid. I gently darken the eye whites to show depth. Now to add the pupils. I take a dark purple and I make a dot on each iris. Once I'm happy with that placement, I make them bigger a little bit at a time until I reach the desired shape and size. To detail the irises further, I make tiny flicks in dark purple pencil around the outer edge pushing inward. Then I repeat this going outward from the pupil. For lashes, I take a very sharp pencil and gently flick in an outward, slightly curving motion. I do this for the top and the bottom. Lashes are something I struggle with and I often have to erase and start over. I had to redo her left lashes three times until I was happy. I finish off the eye with some eye shines and a few small lighter highlights. I use gouache paint and a nail art dotting tool. I prefer to use gouache over acrylic for this because it's water activated and if you mess up you can wet it to remove it and try again. I use my quadruple zero liner brush to add a few light areas along the waterline and tear ducts. I wanted to give her a circus inspired face paint, so I sketched out a design in watercolor pencils and then I filled them in with gouache. Thank you all for watching me struggle through this doll. I personally learned a few things and hope you can learn from my mistakes. Remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to stay tuned until the end for the reveal.